Angela Lansbury, welcome to the programme. Now tell me, what makes you such an expert on table etiquette? A long time ago I wrote a book called Etiquette for Every Occasion, during which I interviewed people in hotels such as head waiters and staff and I went to the Lucy Clayton Grooming School and I did a lot of research but I think my mother had also taught me a great deal about table etiquette which was more common in the olden days than it is nowadays and everyone eats with their fingers in fast food places. So when you go into a restaurant or to a dinner party what is the first thing you do? The first thing you do is wait by your chair and I hope if you're lucky that if you're a lady your boyfriend or the waiter will pull the chair out for you so that you can get into your seat elegantly and I hope somebody else will help you pull, push your chair in. Now I see there's always a napkin often when you <laughs> sit down. What do you do with the napkin? I see there's no napkin at the moment. This is take two. We did have a napkin. You did. <laughs> take one. <laughs> the napkin is there. So you've got your yeah. napkin so in the, the glass. Napkin is, the napkin is in the glass or if it's fanned out on the plate. And of course you take the napkin and put it on your lap unless the waiter does it for you. I often see men do this and I personally think it's terrible but I'm just curious to know when they put it around their neck like a bib and over their chest is that bad etiquette? I think in the olden days it would have been but I believe that people are getting more practical nowadays and I would rather a man did that than got mess all over his tie however I have a practical solution if I'm going to somewhere like a curry restaurant I will make sure I'm wearing a scarf which can be taken off and washed later and it will protect me and then I can take it to show my décolleté if I have one uh, later on in the meal. That's a really clever tip there, thanks Angela. Now we can see the table laid out very elegantly. What do we do? We've got some glasses. Which glasses do we use for what? You generally start on the outside because that is easiest. Obviously you're not going to reach past one glass and knock it over to get to the next one. It may be that your water glass is pretty obviously a water glass which doesn't have a stem because the stem is to keep your hands away from your white wine so it's not warming it. However, a long glass is generally for white wine and sparkling wine, especially champagne, because you don't want to lose all the bubbles so you have a small area at the top. If you're not drinking, is it customary for the waiter or for the host to remove the glass with which you'd have your alcohol contained? Yes. In fact, in some Muslim countries, they'll take the glass away as soon as a woman sits down. Oh, really? Well, one of the first things the waiter will do is serve you bread. Yes. Now, which side would your bread plate be on? I always get confused. It's very easy. You're right-handed. You use your right hand for your glass. Your left hand is on the other side for your bread and butter plate. Now we've got a number of knives and forks and spoons. Which ones do you use for which course? You start at the outside like we did with the glasses because that's easiest and you work inwards. Often you will have different sized knives and forks and you'll have a, a smaller knife and fork on the outside for the first course which in California would be a salad but in England might be fish and you used to have different kinds of fish knives so that you could fillet your fish and they would be flatter and also before in the days of silverware rather than stainless steel and dishwashers it was thought that you might get the smell of the fish so you had a separate fish knife that's falling into disuse but if you're in a grand restaurant you could always take a sneaking peep at the menu and have a look if you're at a grand restaurant for something like a wedding and if then you'll be able to easily spot which cutlery goes with which meal. So for the first course you use outside in, so the yes. smallest one on the outside yes. is when you will use. You'll, you usually have a, a soup spoon on the outside. That's a peculiarly British thing I recently discovered. I was in an Italian restaurant served by a Polish girl and I couldn't understand why she gave me what to me is obviously a dessert spoon and I wasn't sure whether I was being insulted or she was being lazy and then I discovered some countries don't have 
rounded soup spoons. Well, if you're from a, one of those countries, I have to tell you that British people expect a rounded soup spoon. I'll go and get one and show it to you. If you'll just turn the camera off and I'll be back in a moment. So, here is a soup spoon. As you can see, it's rounded. This is a dessert spoon. You can usually tell because the soup spoon is on the right and it's the first thing you're going to use, whereas the dessert spoon is kept out of the way at the top. So the inside knife and fork will be for your main course. Yes. The spoon at the top end of your plate facing you will be for your dessert. Yes. If you see a soup spoon or a normal spoon. And it's rounded, that's a soup spoon. Yes, that's on the outside. So here's our soup plate. Oh, the other thing I must tell you, when I went to Miller Howe in Cumbria, I thought everything was perfect. And I asked the people at the next table what they thought, and I found that the man on my right was himself a man who owned a restaurant. And I said to him, is there anything wrong? And he said, yes. I said, what's that? He said, the direction of the plate. Many plates have a crest on them. If the plate has a crest at the top, that should be at the 12 o'clock position. If you've got something like this fruit, uh, to me it clearly goes that way up. If you've got a willow pattern plate, clearly it should be the right way up and not at an angle. Heaven forbid it should be upside down as if everybody has died. The other thing which I think is most important is the cup. When somebody gives you a cup, I'm right-handed, I expect the cup to be put like that so I can pick it up with my right hand. I don't want to be talking to somebody and hunting round looking for the handle. I don't want to be distracted and have to turn it around. I think it's an insult to me if the person who is serving puts the cup down with the handle somewhere not on the right. The same goes for the jug. Sorry. The jug should have the handle on the right if it's next to me and equally with a water jug. Of course if it's in the centre of the table it could have the handle pointing to the senior person or the oldest person or in China it would be the oldest daughter. And just before we go, what have, what are these signals with the knife and fork when you finish your meal ah. or if you're still eating? Right. In England, knife and fork together means I finished, waiter, I don't have to say anything, he knows to take my plate away. Not before the other person's finished because that would be rushing them, but it shows that I have finished. If my knife and fork is like that, I have not finished, tells the waiter. Even if I've got up to answer the phone, go to the ladies, to powder my nose, whatever, do not take my plate away. I'm so you're back. still eating. Yes. You're still eating. Anything else you'd like to add? Anything else we might have forgotten? Yes. In France, it's all completely different. They put the fork that way up. They put the knives and forks like that. When they finish, I can't remember if it goes to the right or the left. It's, it's, it's something like that. They do things differently. You have to watch... They say, when in Rome do as the Romans do, when in England do what the English do, and when in another country do what they do. So whenever we're in England, we now know what to do. We have no excuse. Or you ask the waiter, or you could always email me and ask me. Thank you, Angela Lansbury. But you must take me out to dinner. <laughs> we'll organise a date. Thank you very much.